Hi again, everyone. I'm Ollie Matthews. This is the Narcissistic Resistance, and this resistance video is sponsored by contribution from Rebecca. And this is Rebecca. I've done a few stories for her. The last one being, it only matters who loves you now because the narcissist never did. Dear Ollie, can you call me by Rebecca again? Listening to your videos on Borderlines, I really see that my mother may be one. I think I've told you that, too. I also thought they were nice people. And although had some issues, my mother was fairly normal and good. My father, I knew, was not normal. He was entitled and childish all my life. Even though my mother tries to tell me that he was normal when I was younger and made lots of money and was the most loving. However, they never had a close relationship and I remember him acting very strange and other family members looking down on him as if he was mentally challenged. He made jokes about throwing, throwing the kids on the roof of the car, and it was always the same jokes. When we played with him, he seemed like one of the children, maybe even younger than us, and shrieked joyfully when he won. I feel like all my relatives were in on this loyalty protectiveness that did not let them see any of the members of, for their unhealthiness, and they idolized my grandfather. <clears throat> My grandfather was a Holocaust survivor who witnessed his entire family being killed, besides one brother whom he found later in Auschwitz, and, made it, and, and it made him very bitter and closed off. His wife had been what my mother called mentally ill because she screamed bloody murder at her kids all day. She spoiled my father because he was the only son, and all of his sisters are jealous of him getting more money than them in their father's will. His mother was put in a nursing home when she was in her 60s because she had a stroke that rendered full, that, that rendered full memory loss and she was shrunken in and looked like a baby squeezing plush toys each time we visited. My father would stare at her with a blank look on his face and say, Mommy, it's your son, <clears throat> brokenly. My father spoke to his father on the phone every single day and night, talking for hours on end about what I heard about what I heard was absolutely nothing. <clears throat> his father made him sandwiches and brought him clothes until he died. To be fair, he seemed nice, but would never hug us. One time I gave him a huge hug to show I cared and he didn't move. When we were children, he would scream at my brother and I and even had my parents bring us over to him while he slapped us for misbehaving. At his funeral, I did not feel sad, just sad as if a distant relative had died. My father did not cry when he heard the news. He just started screaming that we had to rush to get there on time because he had died seven and a half hours away from where we were. Um... Is there, I believe there's a time limit, right? I think you have to bury somebody within 24 hours in Judaism. I don't know. I, I, I've heard that. My mother, had, my mother always had lots of admirers. She was friendly with all the women in town. She cooked and delivered meals for the sick and made lavish parties for the holidays. We spent holidays with my cousins, and I always felt like I didn't belong, but I had to play the part. The families were loud and gregarious, with lots of cousins and gone food and good food. My aunt was very self-conscious and used to scream at whoever took pictures of her. She and my mother had a falling out when I got older, and she screamed at my mother and called her a pig and a disgusting cook. By my grand by my grandfather's funeral, I was confused because she had been so nice to me on one of my visits to her as a teen taking me out to dinner and paying and paying and telling me I was her niece and she cared about me. I also thought my mother was so nice. Why? So why would anybody scream at her? When I got in trouble in high school because I was caught going against the rules of not being able to listen to certain music, my mother was on their side when they told me I was a bad girl and most of my teachers wanted me kicked out. I was well behaved in class, always trying to please the teachers, so it confused me as to why they thought I was bad. 
but my mother said I have to listen to them and she didn't seem and she didn't seem bothered by my getting in the trouble. She was clueless and had a certain naive naivety to her and I was always embarrassed that she seemed behind the other mothers. She herself was not that great of a student, so she didn't seem to care about grades and just seemed to send me to school because it was what everyone had to do. She was very into how I looked and took pride in when people told her how pretty I always looked and whenever I didn't wear enough makeup or looked pale, she was disappointed in me. When I didn't like her clothes as a kid because I felt she didn't like she didn't look stylish enough and I was embarrassed in front of my friends, she was deeply hurt but listened to me and wore the one outfit I approved of. When I was in third grade, we had a mother-daughter breakfast at school and I was deeply embarrassed of her coming because we looked nothing alike and I was ashamed of people knowing I was adopted. So I did not tell her and she berated me for it for years, saying I had hurt her. When I told her I was hurt for, for her not noticing my pain as a child when I finally got around to facing it as a teenager, she was shocked and said, wasn't I over it already and that I must have emotional issues because I was so moody all the time. She could not understand why I was always in my room and did not come out for, for supper when they sat down to it. But it was such a tense atmosphere that you can never know when my brother or father started having a tantrum and blaming everyone. She needed me by her side, she said. My therapist said that we were the only strong ones in the family, so we needed to stick together and read inspirational books to keep each other strong. I felt like there was a huge weight on my shoulders all the time and wanted to stay away from all of them. My mother would sit well into midnight after she had no more phone calls to make and eat an entire bag of popcorn and chips reading romantic novels. I once read one of them and it was very dirty and I felt scared. She spoke on the phone to her sisters for hours in hushed voices and it was always about their children or other family problems. When they got together, it was always talking about problems and how hard this one, how hard this one or how that one had it. I thought it was crazy or not. I thought I was crazy or not caring for liking the focus on these things and found it a bore. Because your family strives and lives in drama. It's constant drama in borderline families. They have to constantly keep it going. You know, the screaming and yelling out of nowhere. I mean, that's a huge red flag. It's a huge red flag. <clears throat> Her sisters complained about the other's annoying habits, but smiled to each other's faces and always tried to impress one another. Their father is always prompt and smiling, but they are always trying to look perfect to him and be respectful in front of him. He is very quiet and gives money to whomever needs it, but never talks emotionally at all. My mother yelled at me angrily when I said there is something wrong in her family because she and them never acknowledge feelings, saying that nothing is wrong and I am trying to dig for problems. She showed the same angry temper that my adoptive sister displays all the time and then claims that my sister has a temper because of her father. My father stayed home all day and expected everyone to cater to him, yelling to us to come here and help him find a hat or boots when he dropped something or got vertigo so needed so he needed us needed our help standing up. He screamed at us to help. It was comical sometimes how he expected us to care for him like he was a baby. He once told my mother to go to hell and shut the door on him when they were when they came in from shopping because she took some money of his. I will say this, Rebecca, your father seems more like the borderline than your mother does, to be quite honest with you. Your mother might be more of a covert narcissist and cold and unfeeling, but I think your father is the borderline. She was using money for his disabilities in order to pay for our living along with her average paying job, so she felt entitled to help herself to his money. 
Meanwhile, he used to stash up on chocolates and pastries, which he ate all day in his room. Your father's the borderline. Your mother's a covert narc hiding behind the borderline of your father. Absolutely. At the table, he would give long speeches about the Bible to anyone who listened and never seemed to hear when we screamed that, that we knew it because it was child level knowledge we were trying to talk ourselves talk trying to talk to ourselves and he interrupted he just kept going with a blank look in his eyes <sighs> sorry they're banging upstairs my mother also seems to not hear people sometimes and goes on about her opinion of what they need to do or feel such as when I told her about my feelings and she said I should get over them because I should be happy. She needed me to be because she could not deal with all the other things at home. Everyone in the family, she said, is an angel f for keeping sane with my father and brother at home. I pitied her too before and thought I needed her help with anything I could. <clears throat> Rebecca, listen to me. You got... You, you, you're making this. You made the same mistake I made with my parents. Okay? Because Drunky was so overtly crazy. Okay? I thought she was the main problem. And she was a big part of it in my life. Okay? Your father is the borderline. Your mother is playing the role that my father played as poor victim. Oh, poor Brian with that crazy wife of his. Your mother is the covert narcissist. Your father is the borderline. Your mother pulls his strings and sucks up the pity supply off your father's childish, bullshit, borderline behavior. They're both fulfilling a role. Both of them. They enable each other in their bullshit. You just got it backwards. She pays for all our school expenses and my brother is 27 and still at home and feels grateful to her for help, for helping out, but gets angry when she threatens to throw him out. He cannot hold a job or save up money because his emotions are unstable. I stopped talking to my mother now because she expects me to be her emotional ear. As she said, I cannot talk to you about my issues because you are always so down by your own feelings, making me feel selfish and unworthy of being alive once again. No, you're just supposed to be the narcissist emotional douchebag. You're supposed to sit there and fucking take all their fucking, all their fucking emotional douche and you're supposed to fill that up. No, no, that's not how it works. Understand something, you got it backwards, Rebecca. You got it backwards. Your mother is a covert narc, narc. Your father's the borderline. <sighs> Making me feel selfish and unworthy of being alive once again. She feels, she feels guilty and after I berated her that she abused me as a kid and I don't need her or her family anymore because I'm trying to live my own life. She dropped off a hundred dollars and some toys. I left in her car with a letter about how sorry, how she was sorry that we had a bad conversation last time and that she wants to buy my daughter a gift for the holiday. I do not know whether to thank her or, or use it or just ignore it. What do you think? Is she a full fledged borderline or just someone who does not understand feelings? And my father is obviously a narcissist of some sort. Thank you and thanks for and thanks for your channel. Have a happy new year, Rebecca. No. No, Rebecca. Your father is the borderline. He has all the characteristics. He acts like it. He is the borderline. Your mother is the covert narc pulling your father's strings to suck up pity supply. You're still borderline pitying this fucking bitch. Okay, why? Because she uses you as her emotional douchebag. All she wants, all that, she's just trying to buy you back. So she can dump her emotional fucking baggage back on you again. That's all she's trying to do. A hundred bucks, that's what it's worth to her. 
She thinks she can fucking suck you back in for emotion for all this emotional abuse, Rebecca, for a hundred bucks. That's how little she thinks of you. That's how little she thinks of you. Because she's a covert narc. Does she have some borderline in her? Yeah, but she's not the main borderline in your life. Your father is. The covert narc hiding behind the borderline is the is the most dangerous combination you can have. That's what I have. Because you don't even realize who's doing what to you. Because there's so much outward craziness. And then you're bad. And then there's the fucking, the, 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 the guilt douchebaggery. You don't need any of it. Understand the dynamic that was set up. Your father's the borderline. Your mother hides behind all his bullshit to suck up pity supply. And that's what she's doing right now. And for a hundred bucks, she thinks she can buy back her emotional douchebag. Don't let the narcissist buy back their emotional douchebag, Rebecca. Stop being it. For a hundred bucks? Come on. That one kind of answers itself, don't you think? So, thank you again for another contribution and another story, Rebecca. I appreciate it. I hope this helps. Thank you to everybody watching. Please leave any opinions or advice in the comment section below. And again, if you want your story read on the channel, you have a topic you'd like me to cover, a narcissist you'd like to expose, you'd like to set up Skype, a phone call, have a private video made, or a Facebook live chat, or you'd like to sponsor a video like this for someone who needs help and can't afford it, or just make a contribution to the channel in general to keep the channel growing, successful, and expanding because this channel survives 100% on contributions from all of you. Without you guys, all this goes away. So if you like what you see here and you want to see more videos like this, you know what to do with the PayPal and email links in the description box. Also, please like and share this video wherever you can. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't. And be sure to click the subscription bell to be notified of all my video uploads. I'm Ollie Matthews. This has been The Narcissistic Resistance. Take care, everybody.